All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. And tonight, finally, I get to reveal the Acer L2. This is a 24 watt version. I was kind of hoping for the 30, but you know, it happens. But before we get into this machine, guys, I want to go through some of the changes because as many of you know, the Acer P20 has been my go-to machine for uh, several months now. I've used it on a lot of jobs and the new L2 They've, they've taken what they had, which was a great machine, and I've, I've grown to trust the machine, but they've made a lot of big changes to it. Uh, some of the changes are mostly cosmetic, but other changes are uh, very structural and as far as the way the machine works, and I think that it's a step in the right direction. They've also added some functionality to the machine with the autofocus and the movable Z-axis, which is very handy. Uh, I got used to using the, the uh, autofocus and the Z-axis. It's kind of become uh, one of those things that I, I don't want to give it up now. Uh, so that's pretty handy. And another thing that I have been begging for, and I, I even messaged Acer about my P20 uh, when I got it, is air assist control. And guys, they have finally done it. The Acer will now control air assist. And you can do this two ways. And they, it comes with a pump, which is a really decent pump. It does a good job. Uh, I've had pretty good luck with it. Uh, it's, it's, it's the square form. Uh, it does have the variable output. And the way it works on the Acer is the Acer actually has an output, output port on the machine. So when you engage the air assist, it energizes that port and there's a little cable that connects to the air assist. You know, the old Acers uh, had the Y cable and you still had to use the knob to turn the air assist on and off. And that was okay, but you know, for those of us that want automatic air assist, that wasn't great. But with this new setup, guys, you can either use their compressor that they send with the machine and run it that way, or if you have an M8 relay, uh, which is an automatic relay for air assist, and you have shop air, which I do, you can also hook that up with a little bit of modification using a short pigtail that usually comes with the M8 and the module itself. All right, guys, so a few things I wanna point out to you before we get uh, started. I have taken a few things off of my machine. Uh, of course, you know, I don't really care for the covers. And I went ahead and took this one off. Uh, it is an orange cover, same same, same basic uh, principle for taking it off. There's two screws that, that hold this on. Uh, I took it off because I do have it in the enclosure. Uh, so I'm not worried about uh, anybody looking at it because I will have the enclosure closed whenever I'm running the machine. Uh, but you know, you may want to do like I do and take those two screws, put them back in the holes that way, when you take the nozzle cone off to clean it, uh, you don't accidentally try to put them the wrong way because these screws, and it's also a good way of keeping up with the screws so you don't lose them. That way, if you do want to put this back on, you have that option. Uh, but it is an orange uh, cover. It, it doesn't have the reflective surface, so that's good if, you're, if you like to keep those on. Uh, you can actually somewhat, even though it's you know orange and it kind of kills the dot, uh, you can see the dot slightly through the material so but i went ahead and took mine off because that's just that's just how i do things guys the second thing is this machine also has an offline controller uh, it plugs into the hdmi port which is over here on the side of the machine and while we're discussing the ports guys y'all know it really annoys me when people have all the the, the, the cabling sticking up on the machine this one does not. It exits out the side away from the machine. So, you know, thumbs up on that. Uh, really happy with that. The control panel, it's a touch screen. It does have a magnet on it. It will stick to the front of the machine. Uh, and you can go in and change settings. Uh, it has the flame detection where you can turn it on and off here. Uh, so you don't have to go into any kind of special software. That's kind of cool. Uh, you have the auto focus on and off. Uh, auxiliary positioning. I mean, it's, it's a really cool interface. This is a little more advanced interface than what I'm used to seeing with these machines. It's very responsive. So if you're somebody that likes these controllers, uh, you know, this one, this one as far as controllers goes, is probably one of the more advanced ones that I have seen so far. 
Uh, the machine does have tilt de detection as well as a flame detection, which you can turn those off here. And basically any of the functions, if you want to turn them on and off, you can, you can do that here. Uh, so you don't have to worry about, you know, having to disconnect from Lightburn and go into another software and try to figure out the settings. I do like that. It's a little less proprietary and gives you a little more flexibility and the ability to use it with Lightburn without having to keep that extra software around like some of the other machines. So with that said, the roller and belt system has got a bit of an upgrade, guys. Uh, this thing uses uh, the rods, stainless steel rods, and basically on the gantry, instead of having rollers, uh, you have basically a metal sleeve that rides on these rollers. Uh, that's a lot more similar to what you find in some of your CO2 machines and, and, and other machines that you know, are capable of a little more speed than what traditionally is expected with uh, diode lasers. And I can tell you from running this machine that that has made a big difference in the smoothness of the machine. And I haven't had any problems with any tight spots or anything sticking or anything like that. Uh, the machine does, of course, have limit switches. Uh, it's So far, it has performed really, really well. The only complaint so far, and I don't know if this is a valid complaint, guys. Uh, I haven't ran it long enough to call yet. Uh, but as you can see on the gantry here, let me turn this off. As you can see on the module, it has this... Uh, laser attachment which also has a limit switch on the bottom of it to keep you from going too deep and and hitting the material with the head now i think that's very necessary uh haven't quite figured out the purpose of the crosshair i'm assuming you can set that up and use that to frame with from my experience doing so is going to cause some issues because the, the work area if you use that to frame it's going to frame fine, and then when you go to engrave, uh, it could cause you to be too close to the rail and mess up your image. I've had that experience with other machines that use the crosshair to frame with before because you don't, you don't think about that when you're framing, and then when you send it, uh, it gets too close to the counter. So personally, my personal preference is I'm not using that for framing. I am using the blue dot. Now, there may be a way that I can turn that off. I'm going to investigate and look into that further. But that's something for another day. Uh, not a bad idea having this laser if you're gonna leave the cover on because you can see it better. Uh, but you would have to go in and set the offset and make sure that you account for that offset when you frame your job out. Now, cable management on this machine, guys. This is probably some of the slickest cable management I have seen so far. Uh, the majority of the cabling runs through the chassis. So there's not, any, there's, there's not a whole lot of cable management to deal with. Uh, you've got one little section here that comes out to give you motion in the, in the gantry. And then you've got one section that comes out from under the frame here to give you motion here. Uh, you do have the air tube as well as the uh, cabling for the, the electronics on the machine. Now, so far, it hasn't given me a problem. I do have plenty of area uh, beside the machine to allow for that. When I built this enclosure, I built it a little wide because some of the machines keep getting wider and wider. And I thought that might be a concern. So I just overkilled a little bit. I've got plenty of space to let this thing move. Uh, but cabling has not been an issue, guys, at all. That's the basic changes that I've seen to the machine. And I don't want to beat you guys up on the first video with every technical specification of the machine. Uh, this machine is supposed to work with the, uh, the rotary that Aitzer, uh recently released, the Chuck Rotary. And from looking at the steppers and everything, uh, I don't see any issues with compatibility or being able to hook that thing up. All right, guys, so this is the first video I'm going to be making with this machine. And I really don't want to bog you guys down and make this an excessively long video. Uh, this is going to be my flyover as far as where I'm at on the machine so far. Like I said, I've had it for a couple of weeks. I've done a lot of testing. I've done some, uh, some tweaks to it and some adjustments as far as working with the Z-axis and the uh, autofocus. Just getting the hang of that. Uh, the machine's performing really well. Uh, I did do uh, a little bit, bit of a testing on the Z-axis and playing with some of the settings. 
there is going to be a very uh, specific way that you're going to want to set this thing up to make the z-axis user friendly and it took me a little trial and error to figure out the settings uh, the book that it comes with it does do a pretty good job of telling you how to set up the z-axis and how to make the auto focus work but there are some settings in Lightburn that in my opinion there's going to be some specific ways in which you're going to want to set that up to get the best use of this add-on which I think is a great tool. I think it's gonna, it's gonna take your abilities with the machine to a whole new level. Uh, but I had a little trial and error with some of the settings for the Z-axis in Lightburn, uh, and I couldn't find any reference material in the book. And of course it's a new machine, so there's not a lot out there on how to go about setting this thing up, uh, especially for us guys that like to keep things simple. So I will tell you, I've done some testing, if I can hold on to something. I've done some testing with the curve of the machine uh, at varying heights according to the settings that you get when you hit the autofocus button. Uh, I have determined through my testing that when it does the autofocus, uh, it's basically going down to the surface of the material and when it senses the surface of the material, it comes up according to the dial on the machine, and I'm guessing this is going to be correct, about eight millimeters above the surface of the material. And depending on how you have your z-axis settings configured is going to depend on how you're going to need to set that up in your cuts to whether you're relative to the position of the laser currently or whether you're using absolute coordinates such as two millimeters four millimeters and so on so those are some of the things that would be a personal preference if you're used to using a z-axis but i'm trying to come up with the simple way for it to work for folks like myself so that I can basically just operate off of the autofocus and from that point if I want to go down or up I can add that in the cut layers and I've, I've figured out the recipe I believe for that and we'll be going over that with a later video on how to set up the z-axis on the machine and use it effectively in your jobs. Uh, I also did another little little test uh, using the, the z-axis and just basically elevated uh, during a cut to see what differences it made. And keep in mind, this is going off of the settings it came once I installed it into Lightburn. I've had to change this to get it to be really effective for me. Now, I will say, uh, I've did a couple of different power tests and uh, I did my, my circles and squares. Uh, the machine, as I figured, performed really well on the circle and square test right after assembly. And part of that, guys, I credit to the fact that there are no uh, eccentric wheels on this machine that you have to adjust and get just right. Using the rods with the bearings that slide back and forth, it eliminates the need for that. So there's not a tensioning issue with those. Uh, really, the only possible tensioning issue you could have would be the belts, and the belts are relatively easy uh, as far as adjustments, and they're very forgiving with this rod system because it doesn't allow the gantry uh, by the nature of the way it's made, you're going to notice it if you get the belts tension too much on one side or the other. So altogether, assembly was not the simplest assembly I've ever done, but it wasn't the most difficult. So I'm going to call this one kind of middle of the road on the assembly. Uh, it, the book does a pretty good job of explaining how to put it together. It comes with a PDF on the card that's in the machine. If you're a little visually challenged like myself, you can pull that PDF up expand it to where you can see it uh, because the book the book although it is a bit help more helpful than what i'm used to it's still kind of a small print and if you don't want to break out the readers you may want to just uh, pull your laptop out and look at the pdf uh, the engraving capability guys this machine i did test and coming out of the box they've got the speed set up to where you can go well beyond 300 millimeters a second on the movement speed of the machine i haven't tested it above 300 because i think that's probably going to be the threshold for most stuff that i'm going to be doing and except for maybe in the case of maybe a mirror or something like that where it doesn't require a lot of power uh cutting ability uh the cutting ability of the machine is really good uh, i have been however playing with the the focus and trying different focus settings but i can say that pretty much regardless of how you focus the machine you're gonna get some clean cuts on this 4.9 millimeter Luon at around seven to seven and a half to eight millimeters a second persistently, consistently. So I'm gonna keep playing with the machine. I'm gonna keep doing some testing. 
uh, try to come up with some more tips and tricks. But the next video you'll see with this machine is probably going to be the setup of the Z-axis and my recommendations for being able to work it into your workflow as far as the options for uh, the light burn settings that there's some switches in there you're going to need to adjust in order to get the most benefit with the least amount of headache. Uh, with the z-axis and for those of us that are new to z-axis is it's been a little bit of a learning curve but i've figured out how to make it kind of simple so watch for that video and uh it should be coming out pretty soon guys uh but i'm not going to do a lot of testing tonight i wanted to keep this video kind of short uh but if if you're here and you're looking for the l2 and you're wanting information on it guys i will have more content coming this week uh, with the machine and the different settings and how to go about getting it uh, configured to your liking. Uh, so if you hadn't already, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, and those videos will be coming out shortly. Also, don't forget there will be uh, links in the description. If you're interested in a machine and you want to order it, uh, you can use that link to let them know Clack Shack sent you, and that will help me with future endeavors with new machines and so forth, and also helps to support the channel through those affiliate links. So. If, if, if you do find this information helpful and you make that decision on your own to make that purchase, I would appreciate it. So until next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.